Please join me in prayer. Father, creator of all and the keeper of all, we come before you and I come before the courts of heaven. And Lord, we take seriously what we do here and we ask you to lead, guide, and direct. But most of all, Father, we ask you for healing our land and we thank you and we give you the glory for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask for approval of the minutes uh, for July 2nd work session meeting. That's all, man. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. I like that motivation down on that end. Uh, Get it done. <laughs> approval of the July 2nd, 2024 regular council meeting minutes. So move. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right, Mayor's message. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, good evening to you and the council. Good evening to everyone that's here uh, from around the city. Uh, I was glad to see uh, so many people uh, at our council meetings in person and those that are uh, watching virtually. Uh, today's message will be brief, uh, but we want to start with a uh, financial update uh, for the city. Uh, coming up on the screen are slides that will reflect how our four revenue streams are trending in the city for sales and use tax, lodging tax, gasoline tax, and the alcoholic beverage tax. Sales and use tax revenue uh, grew about one half a percent less in June than for the month of May. However, revenue from this stream increased a little more than 5% over the same period of the previous fiscal year. Overall, sales and use tax revenues continue to come in a little bit more than 5% year over year. Although the cost of many goods is more expensive than a year ago, the increased growth in sales and use tax revenue is an indicator that many of our citizens and tourists are continuing to spend money at local grocery stores, restaurants, as well as athletic venues. These are the sectors where most of the growth has occurred. Next slide. Lodging tax revenue has increased 2% in June compared to May. The revenue source for the current year compared to June FY 2023 had a growth rate of 9% year over year. This revenue stream has increased by 6% since last year. Uh, I believe the lodging tax revenue will remain stable for the remainder of the fiscal year due to visitors spending multiple nights in local lodging venues for conferences and seasonal sporting events such as the Department of Air Force Information Technology Cyber Conference or DFITC and the Football Championship Series that are scheduled for August and the Red Tails Classic that is scheduled for Labor Day weekend. Next slide. Year over year, gasoline tax revenue has grown over the last couple of months. However, it's not fully rebounded from having only broken even in fiscal year 2023. Collections were lower in June than in May, and the revenue source had a growth rate of around 2% in the month of June. Year over year, gasoline tax revenue is less than break even, or approximately $100,600 less in the same period in fiscal year 2023. Hopefully this revenue stream will break even by the end of the current fiscal year. Next slide. The alcoholic beverage tax revenue had a growth rate in June of more than 21% compared to the same period of the previous fiscal year. Considering this revenue stream was less than break even for the previous year, it appears to have rebounded for this year. Overall, year over year, the alcoholic beverage tax revenue has a growth rate of 9%. This concludes my executive summary on revenue for the city of Montgomery as of June 30th, 2024. Um, now on to some good news. Um, we got a new grant uh, from the Department of Transportation. Last week, United States Representative Terry Sewell announced that we will receive nearly $17 million from the U.S. Department of Transportation to upgrade the city's bus system. The money is being made available to us through, the president, through President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law. The M, as our transit system is known, will use the money to buy new battery-powered electric buses and charging equipment. This will allow us to uh, 
transfer more to a uh, more sustainable um, mode of transit. It will allow us to increase our mobility as well as to reduce emissions. It will also, we will also be able to use this money to start a workforce training program, creating new jobs in the city. This investment will enhance public transportation while promoting uh, this sustainability. Um, on Thursday, I'll be meeting with the Department of Energy uh, around the $17 billion that they are pushing out to cities for additional funding uh, and resources. And so while we are excited about what the Department of Transportation um, has awarded us through our grants department uh, and through the, for the city of Montgomery, we're even more excited about the opportunity we have to bring more sustainable uh, options and opportunities to our residents through other uh, appropriations and grants, uh, hopefully by the end of this year, if not certainly by the beginning of next year through the Department of Energy. So we just want to thank uh, Congresswoman Sewell for working with us on this, and certainly our grants department, our transit department, and everyone in planning uh, who was involved in this process. Now, uh, we want to recognize someone who has been a, a fixture uh, in the city of Montgomery, in particular Montgomery Fire Rescue, for a long time. Uh, he has served our city for more than four decades, and he's shown bravery in the face of danger and dedicated himself to men and women who serve in Montgomery Fire and Rescue together. Chief J.J. Addy has consistently demonstrated his unwavering commitment since the first day on the job, October the 11th, 1983. An exemplary leader, Chief Addy advanced his knowledge and skills, which allowed him to rise through the ranks. His critical leadership in commanding fire scenes, notably saving a trapped victim during a house fire, showcases his dedication and bravery. He was noted for his work as a sergeant with the Hazardous Materials Response Team. As a lieutenant, he was noted as an effective leader. As a fire captain, he managed operations and supervised three ships. In 2000, Chief Addy was promoted to District Fire Chief, where he was entrusted with the future of the department as the head of the Division of Training. During departmental restructuring in 2002, Chief Addy became an assistant fire chief, where he implemented innovations that enhanced Montgomery Fire Rescue service quality. In 2007, Chief Addy was promoted to Deputy Fire Chief. In this role, he was instrumental in various improvements, acted as liaison to the fire department chaplain, and managed significant departmental changes. Chief Addy provided insightful guidance as he served as a policy advisor to the fire chief. Since assuming the role of chief of staff in September 2019, Chief Addy has demonstrated unmatched work ethic and dedication. He has been central to budget preparations, facility renovations, apparatus specifications and designs, and the establishment of the Heroes Walk, honoring Montgomery Fire Rescue's fallen heroes. Chief Addy's commitment to excellence has culminated in Montgomery Fire Rescue achieving an ISO 1 Class 1 rating and international fire accreditation, a testament to his leadership in the accreditation process and strategic planning. For almost 41 years, Chief Addy has been an invaluable asset to Montgomery Fire and Rescue and the citizens of Montgomery. His career reflects a profound dedication to public service, making him a model of professionalism and integrity. Now, therefore, I, Stephen L. Reed, Mayor of the City of Montgomery, Alabama, do hereby recognize Chief J.J. Addy for his unwavering service and contributions to our commitment and for the courage and resilience that he models. We extend our sincere gratitude and best wishes for all of his well-deserved retirement. And at this time, Chief Addy, come on up so I can present this proclamation to you and want to allow you to say a few words as well to the council. Uh, I would like to say something, you know, I, like I said, 40 years I've worked for four fire chiefs and five mayors if you count Mr. Jenright, and I wish he would have continued because I, I enjoyed working with him as a mayor. Uh, one thing I do want to say, you know, in 40 years I've seen a lot of changes in the city and the way things go, and I've, in all the mayors that I've worked with, the five I've worked with, start with Henry Fulmer, 
difficult to believe from what you hear in today's society. Mary, you're actually the best performer in this position that I've been working with, and I appreciate what you've done for the city, the finances, the treatment that you've given our employees. <laughs> take a lot of heat for what goes on, but the, the one thing I try to reflect on is from the public safety side, this is not a Montgomery issue, this is a United States issue, Amen. culture's changed, Amen. and that's what we've got to adapt to. As a, I hate the fact that when I retire, which is one of the reasons I'm retiring, is I'll be moving away to be with my grandson. That's the most important thing right now. Otherwise, I'd stay here. I love living in Montgomery. I like the fact that my house has been paid for since 2016. <laughs> That's been really good. That's going to change. Uh, city Council, I've enjoyed working with y'all. Uh, Mr. Jen Wright and I have been together, seems like forever. What are you? And I've enjoyed working with you and Ms. Pruitt and the newer ones. Uh, the one thing I do ask is y'all have a commitment to this city. Like with us, we have to set our personal feelings aside when it comes to doing this job. You need to do the same thing for the city. There doesn't need to be any bickering in public, argument against each other. Thank you. you have to show unity to let the public know that you're as a team for them. Hear their complaints, hear their concerns, but at the same time, you have to support each other or else the city's going to fail. I love living here and I hate the fact that i got to leave. Thank you. Forty-one years. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you, Chief. That's a great way to end my message. It, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, this will kind of come close, uh, will even out. Uh, but we've got a girls team that's going to the World Series. Uh, They are a group of young athletes. Uh, the incredible Montgomery Gray Ponytails 12 and under softball team has won the Dixie Softball 12 and under state championship after five days of intense competition in Troy. Uh, these dedicated athletes, some of whom have been swinging bats and chasing dreams since they were six <laughs> years old, have finally triumphed. Many have faced heartbreak as state runners up in the past, but now they're heading to the Dixie World Series in Prince George, Virginia with an impressive 8-2 record. This marks their first ever appearance at the Dixie World Series, and for some, it's their last year of recreational league ball. Let's rally together to support and celebrate these talented young athletes as they travel to the World Series as Team Alabama. We're going to call all of their names uh, before we uh, take the picture. I may have uh, not done this correctly. Uh, Reese Ellis, raise your hand. All right. Okay. Alice Vickers. All right. Addie Brunson. All right. Elise Davina. All right. Ellie Steen. All right. And Rosie Lassiter. Emma Redmond, Nora Burgess, Lydia Shepard, is it Coria? 
Kennan, all right, uh, Paisley Yeager, and Dylan Johnson, all right. Thank you, and thank you to the coaches as well. All right, Mr. President, that concludes my remarks. We are here on two great notes, so let's keep it going. Thank you, Thank Mr. you so Mayor. much, Any questions for the mayor before you take a seat? All right, Madam Clerk, item number one. Mr. President, item one, 45-day review of Infusion Lounge, thir lounge 35, 3905 Troy Highway. Mr. Mitch. Mr. President, um, Mr. Johnson, um, I hadn't had any, any um, negative feedback I have been asking. Um, only thing I ask that you keep doing what you're doing, um, report anything that you might come in contact with you, and good luck with your business. Thank you for being in District 6, sir. Thank you name so much. For the record. Thank you. Your name? My name is Terrence Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, let me interrupt. Mr. Mr. I mean, Mr. Dink, right? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the Hoka, Hoka House, I'd like to release him for fearing compliance. I'd like okay. to release him. I had him under surveillance and they've they're here very good so I like to in the really sit there. Good okay. move. You got that Madam Clerk? So no review. No, no review. Okay. I'll spread that in the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Jim Wright. Mm -hmm. Item Clark. two, resolution related to the City Board of the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts and the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts Association Board. Okay. I, I have make sir. a motion to deny. Okay, yeah I have several people to speak for on that on that item on this agenda. Uh, Take the president to come. If you're standing on the museum, fine arts, if you're here on their behalf, please stand for me, please. You by yourself. No. <laughs> Your name for the record, ma'am. I'm Laurie Jean Wheel, uh, president of the joint boards of the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. Okay, anyone have any questions, Ms. Wheel? I don't, Mr. President, but I'd like to know out of those that are standing, who's on the board for the association and who's on the city board? Come on down. We need you to do 25 yeah. push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Mitch. Um, it was the um, advice of the, the committee that we voted this resolution as a no, Mr. President. All right. I have a motion to vote on item number two. All in favor or denying this resolution Denied. on item number two, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right. I think I have a substitute. Well, but it's going to be a new, res new resolution. Yeah, okay. Mr. President, I want to bring forth the resolution from the floor. I know that in the uh, process of um, not adopting the uh, resolution that was introduced earlier. Wanted to make sure that there wasn't any interruption to the uh, employees that receive stipends from the Museum of Fine Arts Association Board. Uh, so the resolution, do I need to read this out, Ms. Blaylock? Yes, sir, it is a resolution to provide a stipend for museum employees. For yep, the for the public benefit. And I've stricken out, I've amended that. Um, you have City of Montgomery, I changed it to Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts Association and then just for the public benefit until this is resolved. All right. Until All right. resolved rather than the remainder. Yeah. So again, just want to make sure that there's no interruption uh, to the stipends that museum employees are receiving today. All right, you hear the most, uh, need uh, most city council. Madam Clark, can I add something to that? You can make an amendment. I can make an amendment to add that I would like to see a uh, attorney general's opinion and an ethics commission opinion brought to the council by a joint, the joint board and the city combined to give us a surveillance of what the uh, uh, 
Attorney General would say and what the uh, what the uh, ethics commission says. Okay. So what we got the attorney attorney general's opinion and what was the other, Mr. General? Ethics commission. Ethics commission. Okay. And what are we asking regarding the the license? The license. Oh. And what the, are we the, asking the law? The, board? the law. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what are we asking uh, them specifically? Stacy, did you hear what you said, Mr. Jim Wright? Yeah. Her mic's not on. She, she, said, what are, she said, what are we asking? I'm asking for a Attorney General's opinion on the law that governs the uh, museum. And an ethics commission. And I would have to, ethics commission and AG's opinion. We got a mic, we got a mic issue over here. Hold on one second. What? Are we asking specifically, I mean, I know what the law says, are we asking them if the association can jointly The joint govern? board, the joint board. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, Mr. President, Stacy, I know I'd asked a question via um, the conversations about uh, the dissolution. Hold on, hold on. I have a motion on the floor. We'll discuss this afterwards. Okay. Now we have an amendment. Okay. So I need a motion to suspend the rules first. So while he's presenting so writing in front of you, he's made an amendment to it. Okay. That's the first amendment mm -hmm. made by seven. Mr. Nine, uh, Mr. Mr. Nines. Mr. Jen writes also had an amendment to request an AG's opinion in the Ethics Commission. So we have two separate Okay. Amendments to this, so we're going to have to have two, su yeah, two substitutes. All right. All right, need a motion on the substitute. The first one is the uh, addition of the AG's opinion and the Ethics Commission's opinion regarding the law for the joint boards. Okay, we, we, we heard Madam Clerk. All right, we're voting on the substitute. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right. And the second amendment is? To add the Montgomery, that the stipend will be paid by the Museum of Fine Arts Association. Yeah, instead of the city. Until resolved. Okay, instead of the city of Montgomery. All right. Yes, sir. We heard the motion. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right. Now we're voting on the main motion. I need a suspension of the rules now. No, sir. This is That's it. That was it. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. Yes. All right. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right. Thank you. All right. Item two is defeated, and we have a substitute. We're moving forward. All right. Item number three. Thank you, counselors. Thank you. Uh, may I have your attention? If you're clapping, that means you have to stay to the end of the meeting. Item three, ordinance amending ordinance number 19-20. Ms. Blood, let me give them a chance to, to leave out. All right, item number three. Mr. Chairman, give me a minute. I think on the last vote, you denied the resolution that was on the agenda. Correct. Yes. Seven introduced a new resolution. Yes. So we should have had suspension of rules before we did any of that. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yes, sir. I just caught that. Yeah, so make a motion to suspend the rules. I need a motion to reconsider. Reconsider. A uh, motion to reconsider. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right, need a motion to suspend the rules? A motion to suspend the rules. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. You don't need to read it again, do you? Do you want to hold the others, the other motions as they were made? Yes, yes. yes. Well, I mean, we can't do that when you cut when you No, we got to right, do it all the consider, <laughs> you, you clear all the motions. Okay, all right, let's go. Uh, okay, the first amendment was regarding Mr. Jen Wright's uh, to add the uh, AG's opinion and the ethics committee. All right, all, voting on, the, on the, the amendment. All in favor, please raise your hand. Who's making the motion? I'll make it. Okay, eight's made it. Unanimous. All right. And now the amendment regarding the changes to the resolution. I'll make that. So moved. All in favor, please. 
Please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right. And now the, the motion to on the Wait, there was one more, and I didn't get to finish it, but I wanted to know, Stacy, uh, what it would look like for a dissolution in three years and have them in operation as it, just like we um, talked about for the ASF. That's, that's a discussion. We're waiting on, we're voting on the motion now. We're voting on the motion. So we're voting on the main, all right, we're voting on the main, uh, re voting on the resolution right this time. All in favor of the resolution, please raise your hand. As amended. As amended. Unanimous. All right. Now, go ahead, Ms. Johnson. I'll allow your discussion right now what you're asking, Ms. Uh, Ms. Bellamy. Thank you, Ms. President. Um, Stacy had an ask, and um, I had a question about what it would look like if we dissolved that, and we came into a conversation on the dissolution of the joint boards and having it just one board in three years' time so that it'll be a change, just like we have the contract and the MOU with ASF, that it'll operate the same, what that would look like and have that in a discussion with not just one member of the association or one member of the board, but with everyone united. So that can be an actual conversation and we can see what that looks like. So that way that it is something that maybe even having a mediator in there because it seems as if some things that don't come to a head unless so maybe having a mediator in there as well, but that conversation to be had so that we can see what it looks like on both sides of the token. So we can see if it's the best course of action, but I think that it may be. Well, I think it, it's a conversation that would have to be had with the association, mm -hmm. and then obviously the mayor would have to be included mm -hmm. because that would be us leasing the museum property to mm -hmm. the association, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and whether the association is willing to take on that responsibility, including, you know, the responsibility of hiring employees and, and maintaining all that that's involved with operating the museum. Right. But, but yes, I mean, yeah. certainly. And I don't know that we need a mediator. I mean, I don't have a dog in the fight. I know. But if it's a matter of what they are willing to do and there's no law that prohibits it, that's my right. issue. Right. And I think that because the conversation started about the day-to-day -day operation, so in order to bring it to a head, and that way we can just decipher what that looks like. And I did bring it up in conversation, and it was something they were willing to look at. Uh, but again, it needs to be a conversation with both boards and the council. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you. Item number three. Three is an ordinance amending ordinance number 19-2024, pay raises. Right, Mr. Pruitt. Move to adopt. Uh, all in favor, please raise your hand. Five. Opposers have the same right. Four. The ordinance is adopted. Mm -hmm. Item four, ordinance authorizing payments to the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department for patrolling and law enforcement until MPD reaches 400. All right, Mr. Pruitt. I want to make a uh, motion to substitute. Need to make a motion to adopt first and then. Okay, uh, make a motion to adopt. Now, the motion to substitute. I want to make a motion to substitute. Ms. Blaylock, could you read that, please, ma'am? Yes, sir. Be it ordained by the Council of the City of Montgomery that the Council requires the payment of $7,500 per month for 12 months to the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office to cover their assistance in patrolling and enforcing the laws of the City of Montgomery. County Commissioner Rhonda Walker has agreed to pay $7,500 per month for 12 months for the county's portion. Mr. Uh, Mr. Calhoun, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to carry it over for two okay, weeks. Let me see that again. Talk about what we talked about during the break. Right. You need to vote to get the substitute on the table. I was fixing to do that. <laughs> 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 I'm not real sure. What did you tell me I need to do? We have to have the, mo the motion on the vote to substitute so that the substitute will come back up next time. All right. Time. Voting on the substitute. All in favor, please raise your hand. Eight. All right, now voting on the main motion. Uh, we, Mrs. You're a no vote. Okay, now that leaves the substitute. You want to carry the substitute yes, over? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it became a new ordinance. It was going to be carried over anyway. Huh? It was I'm a new listening. ordinance. I'm All right, over. we good. We good. I'm over. All right. Item five, resolution repealing the legislation which created Montgomery City County Personnel Board and expressing council's intent to adopt an ordinance creating the City Personnel Board in accordance with Act 2024-337.
Uh, Mr. Blaylock, I'm withdrawing number five because the language in it on the personnel board is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to do a human resource department for the city of Montgomery. Yes, sir. So I'll bring back a new ordinance. Yes, sir. Councilman Calhoun. Items. I'm sorry. Is my microphone working now? Mm -hmm. It is. Thanks, Mr. Mann. Um, the state law says that that, part, that the roll call vote has to be to a, that the city council will adopt the city personnel system. But I'm, I'm happy to look at it mm -hmm. and, okay. and talk to you about it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Your time is my time. Item six, application for a conference center doing business is ABJC Conference Center, 3836 Harrison Road. All right. Yeah, that's an old business item reserve. That's old business. Mm -hmm. I know. I thought you were stating. Mr. Uh, this semester. is where I gave you all the definitions yeah. of between a conference center. So the, the issue that we've got that we're facing right now is this definition of event halls, convention centers, and conference centers. And uh, Councilor Johnson and I spoke, and I believe that we're going to review this as part of our, is it the, com just, just commerce, com committee. the commerce committee? The city needs to adopt um, these definitions for us to move forward. Currently, in case anybody's wondering, we have a, is, I guess it's a moratorium on we do. Event halls within yes. a four mile radius of each other. Yes. So, uh, Councilor Johnson, I'll let you set the date for us to review that, but until then, uh, we cannot um, issue any licenses for the applying conference centers. So, for right now, we're going to have to table that indefinitely. All right. Okay. Item seven application for a conference center doing business is B Smart Conference Center, 3834 Harrison Road. Same issue Same applies, thing. so we're going to table that indefinitely. And is this, um, I don't know if this is something that can be made. I guess we'll make it public after the fact so that revenue. Right, it'll be on the, uh, we'll actually discuss this on the 23rd. In the 23rd. Mm -hmm. so have Thank you. you. Item seven will be carried over yet. Yep. Right. Tabled indefinitely. Table, yes. Item 8, resolution appointing A. Diane Burke to the Board of Adjustment. All right. Ms. Riley? Yes, I would like to appoint to the Board of Adjustment. So which one will make a motion? I make a motion to appoint Ms. Diane Burke to the Board of Adjustment. Okay. okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. Item 9, review of Soul Food Kitchen, Selvin's Soul Food Sports Cafe, 1266 East Del Mall. And business license has requested this be carried over. Is that right. the will of the council? Yeah. Yes. Item 10, review of auto repair expert LLC, 724 Oliver Road. The representative for auto repair expert Oliver Road, please come forward. Yes, sir. Well, we're working, we're in progress of getting all the information in that you guys need. Uh, I have hired a CPA to come in and adjust everything. So we're looking maybe another week or so where we can start getting stuff in back to you guys. Thanks, What's man. your name for the record, sir? Willie Barr. Willie Barr. You got him? Yes, sir. All right. This two, have any questions? Um, can you give me a report, please? He owes um, business license and sales tax. For how many years? Quite a few. <laughs> why, why she's looking, Mr. President, I'd like to ask a question. Yes, sir. Sir, how long have you been in business? Uh, about 23 years. Let me ask you this question. How long have you not had a business license? Uh, I think it started in 2019. But like I say, we're working on it. I got CPA I hired and I'm, you know, getting the retainer fees. So I'm just waiting on them to get the numbers in so I can pay. It's not money. We're just trying to make sure everything is accurate. But you're operating without a business license. Yes, ma'am. I know. We just, we just, we just can't have that. Yes, ma'am. 
So are you still on a day-to-day -day base working at your shop? Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, this is, the, Ms., uh, Mr. President, Ms. Beard. Ms. Johnson. This is what we were speaking about when we talked about businesses operating in the city limits with that. Sir, are you aware that we can find you every day you operate yes. that business? I, I can't, I can you afford that? I know, no ma'am, I can't. So why have you been doing it? I'm just really curious. Yes ma'am. I mean, I got behind, I mean, I'm, you know, got behind on, you know, federal taxes, which I had to catch up and, and you know, I just got behind. But like I said, I'm, I just need a little more time to get everything in. The, the longer you take, the, because if we don't find you, and another business comes up, we, we can't do that for one-off businesses. It has to be the same across the board. That's literally why we're having this conversation, yes. because it's been happening, and you're taking away from the city in your operations. You put it in your pocket, but you're not paying your dues to the city. Okay. Right. Um, but, I mean, can we do a cease and desist on that? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. But you're still operating every single day. Yes, ma'am. I have to. Those that's my own means. Then, then we're going to have to find. I mean, we can't operate a business without a business license since 2019. He's already going to have citations added on each year. Well, we, go, go ahead, Mr. Bryant. I'm going to let you guys handle it. I'm going to stay out. <laughs> we, go ahead. We've got to have some serious effort on your part yes, sir. to let you continue because I don't know that number. But that's got to be a big number. We got five years business license sales tax. So I, I know we can't talk about the number, but we've got to have some of that. Serious I think I think we moved to, to close you down. Do you come Absolutely. in with some money? I mean, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. President, uh, I, I guess we, 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 we're harping on the the owner, but five years. So he should have been in front of us a year ago, two years, years ago, ago, years ago, three years ago, four years ago. What is revenue doing? So that's what I'm saying. We, 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 I know we're talking to the owner, but it's our responsibility that he gets in front of us or anybody gets in front of us before five years. Okay. Mr. So how does that happen? The point is, it, it's, it's happening. For, for an owner to stand here and say, I don't have a license, and I'm continuing to, to do business in the city of Montgomery, and there's no recourse. If we're going to cease and desist, there has to be a punishment that meets the crime. Well, I would never pay it either. Mm -hmm. After five years, and we're saying, well, we, we cited him, and he can continue to work. we got to have some teeth and got to enforce these laws that this council passed for the city to operate by. Mm -hmm. He, sit, he sit, stands here and say, well, hey, no, I don't have a license. I just have to do it. I'm not trying to put you out of business, but in order to do business in Montgomery, you got to do business the right way. Yes, sir. You Honestly. know, every, everybody that's doing business has to get has a business license. You got to apply for the business license. You got to pay your taxes. And, you know, I know you got to feed your family. That's true. But to stand here and say, no, I don't, and I'm just operating, you know, that's not on this council. You know, that's on the day-to-day -day operation of the city from our license bid to close you down and put padlocks on the place. And, and, and that's not fair to the citizen, the citizen that come out and just pay for the license on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. But we can't have law. Well, well, we got to get some I teeth mean, to do got, something because I mean, we talked about that in one of our, in our, in our council there. We, we have so many businesses operating without a license that we, we're missing out on so much revenue. And we have a budget that's so tight that we have to get every penny to do things that's legal in this city. But, but I, Mr. President, can I ask something? I'm no, trying to figure out how we let him continue to operate year after year after year and no one has checked on this no they checked on it. i mean every year you all have brought it in and never brought it up to the council to say anything because like i said it's not fair for people who actually run business no, and do it correctly and then we can go and just pop up do our fines and through telephone email text message and it's done. It's not fair for the legit businesses that are around here that we constantly let people come here and run a business without paying taxes and revenue into our city. Because this is how we develop money for our districts in our city as a whole. All right. So, Ms. Beard, what's, what's the will? I mean, it's just a review, so what's your, what's your plan? I'd say you shut down your business until you can take care of the business to pay back the city. I mean, you're not, you're not paying into the city any taxes. People here are business owners. You're not running a proper business. 
And there are plenty of different ways that that can happen. I mean, you can get caught up so forth and so on. Okay, my question, how did this get on the agenda? It was brought by revenue. Okay, so why are we doing it if you don't have a license? We couldn't do a show cause, so they requested that it come for a review before y'all. But well, nothing we can do, you don't have a license. Yes, sir, I know. <laughs> why not? No. Okay. I need instructions from the floor if you don't want me to bring any more. Yeah, I mean, it's just a discussion, you know. We but then he conti people continue to be able to operate yeah. without a license. So that's, why, right. that's why we'll have that conversation about the recourse in the um, committee meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good luck with your business, sir. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> This don't make sense. I mean, don't make how did we get to the uh, review of Avignon Terrace Apartments? How did that happen? Five West Freddy. Right, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. How did that get good luck with your business? No, good luck with your business, sir. Item number, uh, item level. I just read it, Mr. President. All right, go ahead. Uh, there, uh, the owner for uh, Avignon Terrace Apartments, please come forward. Mr. President, he sent us a long email yeah. about how he's sorry, but he's located over 2,000 miles away in California. Yeah, Mr. President, he's uh, not present and also according to Revenue during the work session, they indicated that on Thursday he should have his CO and then have the business license issued, so the issue should be taken care of. But again, I, I think this is just an example of another Out of state business owner. that's operating. And this one is a Without of a business license. Mm -hmm. That's housing people. So we get people coming in all the time complaining about the conditions of their apartment buildings and they're being run by people that don't have business licenses. I applaud Mr. Mitchell and his efforts with the attorneys to try and get these places shut down in the courts, but I mean, again, echoing the thing, same thing that's already been said, it's completely unacceptable that we'd allow this to happen, to have people occupied in a place that doesn't have a business license, so when they don't do well by their residents, and we can't even take that away from them? And I think this is that, uh, Mr. President, this is that conversation we had about, uh, Stacy. if you remember, Will, I asked about the, uh, with Mr. Mayor, I know you brought this up a couple of times, but there's even, as we talk about occupational tax, there's a landlord occupational tax that we can charge and get funding for all of these out-of-state owners. And that's something that we need to be lobbying and championing so that we can get that money and either we'll cut back on all those people coming to try to get properties here because we have a fee, or we'll get that additional stream of revenue that we're looking for in the city. Well, let, let me yes. ask you, how long, Mr. President, I got a question, I apologize. Mr. Grant. Um, when, when do we lien the property? Because a lot of these apartments sell, they'll be six months a year. And, and the, the next guy said, well, that wasn't my problem. That was the previous. In three months, six months? I mean, these guys are out of state. We need to be leaning the property so that sale cannot be go through without that tax being paid. So we, we need to be leaning the, the property. I see Jim Edwards sitting out there. He'd be glad to lean it for us. Uh, so, I mean, we just need to be leaning the property. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do we go about that? A legal way of doing it. Yeah. All right. I, I think... I think we're handling it this way. Madam Clerk, on these reviews of properties without license, please run those through me before we put them on the agenda. We're not going to do this anymore. Yes, sir. I sure Thank will. You. Is there any resolution on this one? Or just leave yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Item 12, ordinance authorizing amending deeds regarding Whitfield property. All right, Representative for Whitfield property. Whitefield, representing Whitefield. Okay. All right. We heard the conversation in the work session. Uh, I need a motion. I can motion to spin the rules. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Motion to adopt. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Ordinance is adopted. Item 13, ordinance authorizing You're good. amending deed. Thank you. Whitefield property. No, he got it. 13. He got 13. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hello, sir. Oh. One more. Thank Hold you. on. Oh, one more. You've just been denied. <laughs> <laughs> Item 13. Motion to spin the rules. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Motion to adopt. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Right. Ordinance is adopted. Thank you. Now you release. You're keeping rough company back there. 
Item 14, resolution setting a public hearing for the adoption of the technical codes of the City of Montgomery 2024 with additions and deletions for August the 20th, 2024 at 5 p.m. All right, this is the one we're going to carry. No, sir, you need to suspend. All right, need a motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Any motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. Item 15 is the ordinance that will be carried over for action following the public hearings. Adopt, adopting those. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Item 16, application for a restaurant retail liquor license, doing business at Summers Place, 7972 Vaughn Road. All right. All right, representative for the restaurant retail liquor license, Summer Place, please come forward. Your name for the record? Uh, Brian Stillwell. Dylan Gass. All right. This is the public hearing. Anyone like to speak against this item, please come forward. Seeing the undeclared public hearing has been held, it's proper for the council. Mr. Pruitt. Make a motion to suspend the rules. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Need a motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. Are y'all back to regular hours? Yes. yes. Thank Started you. yesterday. Thanks. Good. All right. Good luck with your business, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Item 17, resolution declaring authorizing assessing cost of abatement of public nuisances on various lines. All right, to speak with the council on item 17, I have Mr. Kobe, or uh, Kobe Taylor, Tyler? Kobe Taller? No, sir, that's, you were supposed to be making a motion to reconsider Governor's House. That's him. Okay. All right, at this time, council, we voted on a, a resolution or ordinance in two weeks ago about the governor's house, I'd like to make a motion to reconsider and then I'll ask your support on the uh, motion once we hear what the owner has to say. All right. Hang on, CC, what did you say? Make a motion. I'm sorry. Yeah, I really want to just I'll hear move, what he got to say. Move, you want to move to re reconsider? Yeah, then I want to take the same vote. Yeah. Move All right. reconsider. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right. Now, this is the public hearing. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening. My name is Kobe Taller, um, and uh, I'm here to um, try to explain, first of all, how I got to here. Um, so um, I uh, purchased the property with a bunch of problems in uh, 2018. I'm going to try to be brief about this. <clears throat> at, uh, in, in 2019, at the end of 2019, We've had a uh, meeting, Cassandra Crosby uh, set up a meeting with Mayor Strange, Mac McLeod, um, um, Councilman Genright was at that meeting. I believe you may have been, I'm not sure, you were. Mm -hmm. um, at that meeting, we set out a, a plan to uh, fix the property. This meeting happened um, sometime in October of 2019. <clears throat> at, uh, at that meeting, we, we all were in agreement. Uh, the, the Mayor Strange has offered a grant. Um, I believe uh, uh, the, the senator uh, for the district also was there. Everybody was going to collaborate, and we were going to uh, set out and, and, and fix the place up. Um, I began, uh, we set out to also have a, a, the next meeting to finalize everything. I was told I needed to come up with the, the plans and uh, to, to get started, um, and which I did. We engaged with a fairly large architectural firm right away. We started cleaning the property. Um, I've sent crews, and, and we, we pretty much took out almost 100 um, um, dumpster containers were for, full of trash out of the building. Uh, got a temporary electric permit. I paid for uh, a transformer for the electric company. We were moving forward. Um, during that time, pretty much in, in February 2020, pandemic hit. All bets were off. My crew, all everybody ran home to their families. The city shut down for over a year. Uh, even when you guys were reopened, uh, the doors were closed. Pretty much, uh, it kind of threw us back. And um, since then, my uh, partner in, in, the, in, the, in this property passed away from COVID, ironically, not really, but, um, and uh, I moved to try to sell it at that point. Um, in uh, just 
more recently, more recently, um, uh, pretty much I had a buyer a week before the closing is uh, when I, we were told we can no longer redeem it because we, uh, we were calling to get an updated um, uh, payoff. And we were told that it's, uh, no, it's not redeemable and, uh, and um, the property was bought by the city, um, not the tax debt. At that point, our, my closing uh, fell through um, and we had to proceed on a legal course to get uh, our rights to redeem back on the table. Um, and that's pretty much how we ended up here um, at this point. I'd like to say that I brought with me, I have an approval from a hedge fund that are jumping in um, and I have an approval for a construction loan to fix the place. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, I want to touch the topic of the condition. Yes, it's an eyesore. I was there yesterday, it looks worse than I, last time I was here. Uh, it is fixable, the bones are strong, it needs more work than, than it did initially, but it's fixable. And um, I'm out here telling you all, I'm, I'm risking my name, my credit, other assets I have to guarantee this loan and to move forward to actually save a, a, a property that's truly a piece of history of this place. And um, you know, it, it, it actually hurts me on an architectural standpoint that this building is a candidate for a demolition rather than, than everybody collaborating to bring it back to life and to, and to, to be, again, a part of, of Montgomery history. I'm pretty sure anybody in here, in this room, has some kind of uh, historical experience in this building. Um, I don't live here, and I'm fighting to save it. I do recognize the value of it, not just because of the structure, and, and all of that, but also because of its, you know, uh, um, historical value to Montgomery. Um, I also would like to say that, that Cassandra Crosby, and I don't know if she, if she came back yet or not, but we have tried to um, uh, contact uh, Mayor Reed a few times. Um, we weren't able to get a meeting. Um, we also tried to create a dialogue of our plans. Uh, I have full intentions to, to comply um, because the first notice of violation I have ever received was a notice of demolition. No one has ever noticed me to clean up the place and we never got a single letter from you guys regarding the condition or regarding you uh, demanding action. Jumping straight into demolition is not something I've ever seen in any other code enforcement hearing. Um, I hope that you uh, uh, really wanted the ben to, to benefit the, this, uh, this location and, and, and East South Boulevard um, because I think that building does have a chance and I do think that structurally it is a very strong building. This is reinforced concrete. We're talking about living area, all the red brick. Yes, it's in bad condition, there's climbing ivy. It looks like crap, may I say. It does, but this is not something that should be pushed down. It can be fixed. I, I have done this for most of my life. I buy distressed properties. I pride myself for taking an ugly duckling and turning it into something that's actually gonna attract a different crowd to the area. Um, so my intentions are clear. I do want to save the building. You can always push it down. If I fail, it won't take more than a few months. And um, you can always demolish. You can never rebuild it, and you will never be able to bring that piece of history back. All right. Any questions for Mr. Stoller? I've got, I've got, yeah, Mr. President, i got a couple. Yeah. i got one, too. Let's go. Come on. Okay. What's, what do you tend to do with the building? Nothing. So our approach to the building is to turn it into a, a permanent housing. It cannot be a hotel. That area will not be able to absorb a hotel. It's, it's not, it, the area is not what it used to be. Nobody will stay there. But okay. as, a, as a, an apartment complex with good amenities and, and the building itself, the structure is good looking. It's, it's international, modern architecture, that red brick and the way it is, the building itself is actually modern. And um, 
and it's reinforced concrete, even the roof. That's probably one of the reasons there's been a few fires in that building and, the, and it did nothing but you know, put a little black on the walls. It is survivable. Even if you throw a grenade in one of those rooms, it will, the, the, the structure will remain. So yes, it needs a lot of work. But is the foundation still in good shape? From what I saw and from the lenders have sent an inspector, from what everybody saw, the foundation is fine. Okay. The structure is fine. There is a lot of dressing that will need to be redone. Anything that's been stuccoed, anything that has a covering, soft tissue, those items will have to be replaced. Uh, you know, they've been weathered out of, uh, out of use, but okay. that's dressing. Okay. All right, Mr. Grant. Mr. Mr. Tate, Ms. Pruitt, and then Mr. Tate, and then we're going to take a vote. Quick question. Right here. Yes. I wrote to the other day just to take a look. There's cracks in that concrete two inches thick from top to bottom. Which location? The, right there in the very front of the building at the governor's house. Okay, the restaurant building, the I lobby. Know, I think it's the hotel. I think it's the hotel side. In the hotel side? Yes. On the brick, you mean? Yes, on the brick. Jam. So that's part of damage, and and the, and it's on the brick dressing. The, right. It's not the actual if the membrane of the of the interior concrete. I, wait, wait, hang on, CC. No. Did you purchase that sight unseen in 2018? I'm sorry. Did you purchase it sight unseen? Sight unseen? Yeah. Did you buy it without looking at it? No, I saw it. It was in bad condition then. It was I not was not like this. Condition. It was, it was abandoned and empty even back then. But this is the kind of stuff I okay. buy. I one, more one more last one. <laughs> is it, I promise. If we weren't trying to tear this building down today, would you be in front of us telling us you had a plan? That what? Would you be in front of us telling us you had a plan if the city of Montgomery didn't want to tear your building over? Or would I actually... Outside out of mind? No, I actually had tried to make a meeting happen uh, a number of times before that. All right, All right. Mr. Mr. Tate. So, so yeah, we want to just uh, cut through the chase. Cut through the chase and put 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 some facts on the table so we can allow you to make this vote. Several notices have been sent to we would say the property owner, whether it was him or whoever was on the record. Notices have gone out about this property, uh, and, and so I don't want you to think that this is the first time a notice has been sent for this particular property. I only received one. Was secondly, uh, look, secondly um, in those notices, uh, the chief building official is the person who has to approve the plan. I have never seen this gentleman a day of my life until right now. So uh, if he's got a plan, it had been sent to my office, and generally when we're in this situation, we spend the time with people in this situation to understand their intent and their ability to make that plan come reality. And in this, and in this case, I hadn't seen anything, and so um, um, I look forward to your vote. Okay. Right. May I, may I uh, reply? Sir, sir, we haven't heard enough. I, you know, I, I reconsidered this to give you a chance to come before the council to talk about it. This governor's house has been an eyesore in the city of Montgomery for 20 years or more. 18, I know you say you stay your credibility on the line, my credibility on the line with this community. We're going to do what we has been recommended by the legal. We went to court with this and by our building official. I will ask the council to, you know, we had a motion two weeks ago to uphold the demolition. I can't make the motion, but I will ask one of my, 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 my colleagues to make that motion and we can take a vote at this time. I'd make a motion to uphold the demolition. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Seven. Right. No, Opposed have the same sign. Six. Six. One and two. How did you vote? You're abstaining? They said abstaining. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have one absent. All right. Motion carries. Sorry, sir. Thank you for your time. Sure. Back to 17, resolution declaring, authorizing, and assessing cost of abatement of public nuisances on various lots. All right. All right, anyone here want to talk to us on item number 17? All right, you need a motion to suspend the rules? Move to suspend the rules. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Move to adopt. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. 
right. Council, I do have contingency funds which have not been approved by the mayor. For District 1, $750 to YMCA, our fundraiser. $1,000 to Distinguished Young Women. For District 8, $2,000 to Carriage Hill Neighborhood Association. $1,000 to Summer Hill Neighborhood Association. $1,000 to Brighton Estates Neighborhood Association. $1,000 to Bell Station Neighborhood Association. Mayor, these are all vendors. You okay? Yes, sir. Madam Clerk, I need yep. to add $500 to Young Men on a Mission and uh, $1,500 to Brentwood Neighborhood Association. Brentwood, okay. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Billingsley Neighborhood Association. How much? $1,000. Come on, Brewer. <laughs> Billingsley Neighborhood Association, okay. And one thousand dollars to Bellingrad baseball. Is that how it's? Is that how they are? Do y'all know? Okay. And one thousand dollars to Bellingrad baseball for the World Series kids. I need to add one thousand dollars Bellingrad baseball also. No, oh, you forgot. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have nothing to for. This for this for I already gave theirs. Thank you. You gave it that. Oh. Yeah, right. got it off. Anyone else? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Mr. Grant? Uh, $1,000 to... You can have to talk in the microphone. Uh, yeah. $1,000 to the Gray All-Star Bunch. I think they've got three teams out there. So, uh, just $1,000 to that league. Okay, I may have to get with you on the exact name for that one because there's several Dixie Youth. And it's Montgomery Gray Softball. Montgomery Gray Softball. Montgomery Gray Softball. Montgomery Gray Softball. Montgomery Montgomery Gray Softball. Yes, Gray Softball. Okay. Okay. Miss, Miss Betty, will these checks be ready tomorrow for all these all star teams? <laughs> no, because no, I okay, want to get the SPA's top <laughs> <that day. laughs> You answer it for you. All right. All right. We Move to adopt. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. All right. Any council have anything else before we get into our public communication? Uh, yeah, I just want to add, Mr. President, just one, one, one brief thing to the council. Uh, we did have our League of Municipalities Executive Directors uh, meeting um, this past week, and we went over some of the different bills that passed through the last session and legislation to look out for for the upcoming session. Uh, but one important piece that did pass this uh, was the Alabama Municipal Official Training Act. It was signed into law by the governor. Um, and it requires mayors and council members to complete 10 hours of training annually. I'll send out a training schedule and how to get that training uh, through Ms. Blaylock to uh, mayor and as well as the council members so that we can ensure that we stay on track and stay in compliance. That's my um, update. The rest of the things I'll send you all the um, legislation to look out for so we can start talking to our constituents about. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Yes, Mr. President, I got one thing. Mr. Grant? We, we've had several incidents of gun violence at East Elm Mall in the, in the recent, um, and I honestly do not know what to do because the owner doesn't put any money in it. He has guys with, you know, they rent a cops, no guns. They don't keep the pro parking lot. Although if, if we shut the mall down, I mean, and I'm not suggesting that, no. then we put all those people out of work. Mayor, I don't really know uh, the owner doesn't seem to want to do what we need to do to, to keep it safe out there. Uh, I realize that people go out there and shop and people work there. I don't want to put anybody out of job, but at the same time, we don't want to put anybody in harm's way either. So I'm, I'm kind of open for suggestions. T. Great Boys, uh, T. Paul, y'all want to address this? I know T. Paul and I had this discussion uh, as he was acting chief, which is why I'm asking him to come up and uh, no, T. Gray Boys had some uh, thoughts and ideas around some of these yeah. issues as well. And obviously that's an anchor uh, in that part of the community. It's right adjacent to Faulkner. Um, and we've had people who have been uh, a little bit too close uh, to the most recent gunfire that took place out there. So, um, T. Paul, if you want to kind of give a little update on some of the things that you shared with me after the previous incident, not the most recent one, um, and where you were in T. Gray Boys, you can 
We've been in contact with them all. They're indicating they are going to start to upgrade their camera system for us, or for them, not for us. Uh, explaining that uh, we actually had to basically get in touch with the home parent company explaining some of the problems because the cameras on the inside were decent. The ones on the outside are, are, are garbage. garbage. That's no good way to put it. Um, they are starting to work with us. I'm now having uh, basically weekly conversations with Mr. Holman. He is the manager out there, so he is at least trying to do that. Now it remains to be seen if he's going to take those steps that he needs because the biggest thing we need is the cameras and we are trying to increase our patrols through those park lot. In fact, we did a couple of patrols through the mall. Um, it was actually kind of set stuff off thinking something was going on and those were some simple foot patrols we put through the mall um, after some of those events um, a couple of days later. And we'll continue to try to do that as per, uh, time permits, but um, we just don't have a lot of time to do that. But when we can, we will. And Mr. Holman, like I say, is at least starting to work with us at this point, uh, trying to make some improvements out there. Well, let, let me comment. We, we had Mr. Holman in probably Charlie about a year and a half ago in here, and he was going to get cameras, and we did all that, and, and they didn't follow through anything. I think he wants to. The owner in New York does not want to. So if you got – so that's, that's our rub right there. The local people want to do it, but the people with the money have not come through it. So hopefully – and, and again, I don't think shutting the mall is about is really a good option, but continuing in the same pace is not a good option either. Two great work. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing I'm thinking along the lines of is that uh, you know we've been uh, in, like I said, extensive com uh, conversation with the sheriff's department as well as uh, I have meetings coming up even with some state agencies. So I think you know obviously we should still pursue the things we're pursuing along the lines of making the requests of, of the businesses in the mall. But I also uh, think that one thing we're gonna be doing is revisiting some things and seeing what we can do in regards to some extra patrol and some things in the building. So I, I do wanna revisit that. And so that's something that we're gonna be looking at uh, and seeing what we can come up with. There are some other uh, strong positions that the council can take that I'd, I'd like to share with you that some other cities have done around the same issue. Having uh, people just hanging out in parking lots, again, is not just a Montgomery issue, unfortunately. Um, and having some of the things that we're seeing, uh, talking with other mayors there, some uh, initiatives their cities have done, really just to kind of force the property owner to do more around security uh, and in order to retain that license. So to your point, uh, we want the mall and that entire corridor to thrive. We want it to be uh, as rich as it can be for everybody that's in that area. Um, but we've got to make sure that they're, they're um, trusted partners and they're willing to work with us. It can't just be uh, the police department, it can't just be uh, the sheriff's department or anyone else. They have to be willing to work with us. As I think we have with East Chase, uh, right. we just don't quite have that movement yet with Eastdale Mall. So if we can't get that uh, commitment and action uh, under uh, T. Great Boys, then I think we ought to look at some other measures that compel them to do that and they want to maintain their business license. I, I'm open because, you know, I'm, I'm getting worn out with phone calls, so I, I'm open. Yes, well, I'm open. Thank, right. you. Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you, Major. I'm open for All right, and our public communication on the agenda item.